He first played for West in 1962 and for Glasgow District, as it was known then, and Al Kellogg's here, two years later in 1964. The West team he played in, and many of you are here, contained at least, at times, 10 international players, including Gordon Brown, Quinton Dunlop, Brian Gossman, Lionel Westman. That side won the unofficial championship as it was then, twice, and were runners up several times. He loved West of Scotland. Sandy Carmichael was Scotland's first rugby player to reach 50 caps, 49 of them consecutively, a world record at the time. 12 seasons in the dark blue jersey between 67 and 78. And those 50 caps there would easily mean 100 today. He went on three Scotland tours Argentina 69, Australia 70, and New Zealand in the water polo tour and wet test of 1975. There was so much water on the pitch, he was asked if he was worried. He said, Yes, I don't swim very well. Eight points to nil lead. Then they seemed to lose their grip on the game. Fortunately for the home side, Scotland didn't press their advantage. And Scotland had to find consolation in a penalty taken by Brown. Bevan again. Delmi Thomas bombs. Edward gets a try for to Michael. Sandy Carmichael going through quickly onto the tap down. You can feel the excitement here. Two points between them. McHart Bam, Patterson to Turner, Turner to frame on the bus, trying to run past Dawes, a beautiful tackle by Dawes. Roger Arneal, inside to McEwen, the Scottish flank forwards there quickly, Gordon Brown on halfway, out to Turner, this is Ray, John Frame, it's a 2-1 to one so far, Billy Steele trying to come inside Bevan, he's inside the 25, Frame again, 10 yards short, knocked over by Barry Llewellyn. Field, a seething cauldron of excitement and tension as Scotland fight back. Barry Flewellen on this side of the front row for Wales, backing against Sandy Carmichael. Edwards pushed into touch by Patterson. Scotland leave in Gordon Brown at the front, McHart, Peter Brown, and Arneal. Arneal palms to Patterson. Turner. Chuck Turner. Three yards short. They're bringing the best out of the Welsh defence. Peter Brown. And it's a try. And there's a chance here for the hooker Clark and he scored. Clark scoring from Carmichael's pass. Fisher throwing on defence. There's a fine catch by Ian Barnes. Sit going. That must be very close to the try line. 15 is Bruce Hay. You've never seen conditions like it. The man who got the. Sandy Carmichael and Ian Mighty Mouse McLaughlin of Scotland. New Zealand gave them no chance 
but inside the mind of the... There's McBride, and there's Carmike who got the try. Look at this ball popping out. There's John sliding through. Gibson the try will make it 40 points. Round goes Gibson. I was just worried about hooking the ball. I didn't know anybody's boring in, but uh, I think Hoppy thought that Sandy was trying to get underneath him, and he, he just said to me, he said, well, he said, if he continues this, I'm going to have to deal with it. And he, he told him not to, and then two scrums later, he must have done it again, and that's where he got one black eye. Anyway, no, I don't know where the other one come from, but he, he wasn't a pretty sight, no. Sandy Carmichael was out of the tour. We all know that that game against Canterbury for the Lions saw Sandy, to all intents and purposes, being assaulted. He broke facial bones, <coughs> and he said before the ceremony, Sandy would have been in the test team, but he had to fly home. It, it's poetry in a rugby field. It's an athlete in a number three jersey playing rugby out in the open field as any back could. He is perhaps the unsung hero of Scottish rugby. Scotland's 1960, 1969 win in France is famous. Yes, for the stunning Jim Telford try. But Sandy Carmichael made two outfield tackles, denying the French tries, and they secured the win. Sandy Carmichael was one of the best rugby men we've ever produced and one of the best players ever to pull on a blue jersey. And you know what, maybe, and we didn't know it at the time, maybe the very best.